Hello, my name is Annie Hotho, and I'm going to be reading you a poem that speaks to some of the themes of the juniper tree. I was lucky enough to visit Iceland three years ago on a travel grant, and I was so astounded by the beauty of the natural landscape and all the myths and legends that kind of prevail around Iceland. I went to a particular beach called Vik, which was a black sand beach, and it had a notice board that told a legend of a reverend who'd spent a whole winter living in a cave. And I've written a poem about this, which I'm going to share with you now. It's called the Reverend John Steingrimson spends the winter of 1755 in a cave at Garthal. In the cave, like the rock belly of a whale, this living wasteland, a stone womb, sunken into the land from heat, its outside split into piano keys of grey, Silver slithers that look like stars come to life, or psalms that have cooled and formed into spikes and jets and edges. The round inside the cave is smooth, like a baby's thumbnail, gleaming from the light of his human skin, which seems to shine dully amongst this purling inner, betrayed by the piles of lumpen, gritty rock which shingle its floors, make a doggerel of the sullen curves, impregnable as the Carmelite nuns of Cloister. He's been storing jars of pickles in its sloping walls, some whale fat, cool and stolid on the shelf, black cabbage stewing on a ledge, some knives dampened by the wet, made blunt, his German textbooks propped up on a ledge. Years ago, it was believed that the cave was a gateway to hell. Some of a spiritual bent believed that they could hear the howling of condemned souls. Scientific investigation later proved that this was merely the sounds of the wind whistling. But the suspicion still lingered, the quavering of those burnt in the volcanoes. Their ash still mixes in with the sand, settling on the beaches. The reverend blessed this place all the same. These walls have been flayed by the beatings of time and use. They form one great rocky seal of a scar, a cicatrix needled by whips of sand and lacquered by salt water. Here, boulders shoulder into curves, dappled by moss, little rivulets of drip, 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 and the tongues of ice and glaciers trace their way down in branches which strain, reach to touch the sea.